Greetings, folks. Greetings, amigos, and greetings, gringos, um, friends, enemies, and people who actually don't really know much about what I'm going to talk about. You're the people that I'm really interested in talking to. Because there are a lot of people who think they know a lot, but all they know is uh, their state national narrative. And today I'm going to speak about that national narrative, which I call the Greek delusion. Now, I know something about the Greek delusion because uh, I witnessed it. My, uh, my uh, relatives, my close relatives, lived in that Greek delusion. Here were people who could not speak Greek, who had no link with anything Greek. However, they, they uh, uh, thought of themselves as Greek because they had been terrorized and brutalized and punished if they did not accept the Greek delusion. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up uh, in an English-speaking education system. And in that education system, there was never any indication that uh, the modern Greeks were anything but Greeks. So I grew up thinking that. I thought, yeah, okay, these people are, are really Greek. That was until uh, walking around in Greece, uh, in Athens, one day walking around, I walked into a, a, a Greek-English uh, Bookshop in Greece, near Athens, near the centre of Athens, St. Thomas Square. So I open up this book, go home, open it up, and there it is, staring me in the face. A book by Woodhouse, just the short history of Greece. And Woodhouse, he loves Greeks. Despite pointing out that they're not Greeks, he still thinks they have the right to be Greeks. Now there's another delusional people. So there it is, he says, you know, curiously enough, uh, the fighters and founders of the Greek state were a non-Greek lot. Now, what does he mean by this, I think? A non-Greek lot. Now, at that time, I didn't know that the, 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 the soldiers uh, in ceremonial dress out the front of Sinai Square, marching back and forth every now and then, I didn't know that what they were wearing was the Albanian dress. But thanks to that book, I did some more research. And guess what I found? I found that <coughs> the founders of modern Greece were predominantly Albanian-speaking people who'd come there in the late, uh, latter part of, uh, or the early part, sorry, of the 15th century. That's when they came in there, or late 14 or early 15. You can Google that and find out. Anyway, <coughs> when those people came there <coughs> and settled, <coughs> they, they lived throughout Greece, uh, in Athens, in Athens. Athens was a third Albanian, the other third was Romans, self-declared Romans. The other third were Turks when it was liberated. And it was only 3,000 people, not the 4 million it is now. Because all the ancient cities of, Ath of Greece have more or less been destroyed. Now, folks, <clears throat> the first president and prime minister of Greece could not speak Greek. Its heroine, Bugalina, could not speak Greek, and so on and on and on. And they didn't speak Greek because they were Albanian speakers, and Albanian speakers exist in Greece and in this diaspora to this very day. They are the real delusional people, because nobody forced them. Our people in Macedonian were forced by them to adopt their delusion, but no one forced them. So that, to me, I'm very sorry. I feel very sorry about those Greeks because to adopt something that isn't yours when you're not being forced to means that you have some form of self-hatred, that you don't hate who you are, you want to be something else. And that's what happened. Now, uh, the, there, are, there, are, there are two things. First, there's the Albanians of Greece, and then the other point that must be made are the Slavic place names throughout all of Greece. What are you talking about? You say Slavic place names? Well, folks, for a thousand years within, within Greece itself, until they created their modern state in 1824, the names, the place names were Slavic words. Now, I don't know how that happened, folks. And that's what I, wanna, I, want, I want people to, to reflect on that. How could it be that right throughout the Greece the Greek mainland, there were Slavic place names. In fact, the very word Peloponnese had been forgotten. That area was called Morea, the place within in the sea. Morea is Slavic for sea. 
Uh, the Albanians who created modern Greece, and people, a lot of people know this. <laughs> In fact, Greeks, Greeks taught me this. I, I, I didn't come up with it. This is Greece. A lot of Greeks know. But it's taboo to discuss. And like one friend of mine over there said, look, we all know, but what do you want us to do? I said, well, what I want you to do is write it. He said, you want my marriage to stuff up? You want me to get beat, possibly killed by, for writing an article? So that's the reality of modern fascist Greek, Greece, that it protects its delusion. It has parties, parties formed to promote and protect and terrorise anyone who is not deluded into becoming deluded and thinking they're Greek. It's simple. It's a delusion if you think you are what you are not. Now, let me tell you. Now, uh, the, these Greek people, they are the found. These uh, 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 Albanian people, Arvaniti as they're called, they're the founders of Greece. And when they founded it and had their meetings and decided they were going to be the kingdom of Hellenes and they were going to ask for a, um, a Western uh, king to be their king, they did that and they got Otto from Bavaria. Now, folks, you have to understand something. The Enlightenment, the Enlightenment of uh, the 1700s, uh, they worshipped the Greeks. They had just dis more or less not just discovered them, but they had got to the point where the Greeks were the greatest civilized European civilization ever. And one of those people in the in, in the Enlightenment, one of the figures of the Enlightenment, uh, strangely enough, was the German princess Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia. Catherine had two grandsons. One was called Alexander. The other one was called Constantine. And why is that? Because in a struggle against the Ottomans, um, Catherine uh, embarked on a, on a very ambitious project of recreating the Roman Empire so that her grandson Constantine could be emperor of the Roman Empire, recreated empire, and Alexander, her other, was a, could be the king, the, the, the emperor, the Tsar of Russia. That was her motive. So what did she do? She brought up the idea, the, the, the Greek project. It starts with her. It doesn't start in the 1820s. It starts with Catherine the Great. She sends uh, the Orlov brothers there, over there to raise a rebellion against the Ottomans. Now it failed. The rebellion failed. But the spark was, was lit. And the idea of Greece was becoming uh, um, an idea that had traction, especially in the West. Because... In Greece itself, the Arvaniti, the Albanians, and the Romans, they did not talk about ancient Greece. They talked about Rome, the Roman Empire. For example, when, when uh, they were fighting a particular battle in, in the, um, the memoirs of, of one of uh, the founders of modern Greece, he writes, hey, we had to send a spy over to the Ottoman forces and the Ottoman forces were all also out of Aniti, so they were dressed the same, they spoke the same, they looked the same, so they spend a, send a spy over there to see what the Ottomans are planning. So we have Albanians fighting Albanians to create Greece and make it independent from, from the Ottoman Empire. There's another delusion for you. But that's what happened. Now, folks, the other... The other elephant in the room, and this is a very big elephant, is what I mentioned, the Slavic place names. And somebody tell me how there can be Slavic place names in an area where there were no Slavs, Slav speakers. How can that possibly be? Well, the reality is that according uh, uh, to Western uh, travellers who are passing past the Morea, not the Peloponnese, the Morea, like uh, uh, Bishop Isidora of Seville on his way to Constantinople. What does he say? He said it's a sea of Slavs. There are only a few Greek uh, uh, citadel cities on, on the east coast. Now, folks, that's the truth. That's not the delusion. That's the truth. Otherwise, there would not be any place names with Slavic words in them. And in fact, another great Hellenic, uh, Hellenophile um, <coughs> who, who recognized